Grace and peace. I want to welcome you uh, to uh, the Sycamore Hill Church Wilmington online service. Um, greetings to the, the entire campus um, and all of those that have decided to log on and, and, and join us uh, for service today. Uh, we thank God that you could be here. We thank God um, and pray that he is keeping each and every one of you. <clears throat> we uh, want to start, I, I think, uh, because of this uh, new format and this um, uh, online scenario, we, we want to uh, try to overcome some of the challenges that might take place in the home. So if we could uh, come together and start to just prepare our, our hearts for worship. Um, I, I would share now a call to worship and uh, a prayer uh, to uh, have our hearts and minds in the, in the place of worship and uh, toward uh, the word of God. But the hour comes and now is when the true worshipers should worship the Father and Spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh those to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Let us pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this time. We pray that you would now center our hearts and our minds on uh, your word and uh, this time that's been set aside for uh, worship and service. Um, we pray, Lord, that the body of the church would be experiencing you in its various locations, Father. And we pray that any that don't know you would come to know you uh, this day. Uh, we thank you again for this time. In Jesus' name, amen. I need to announce and share with the Sycamore Hill Church uh, Wilmington campus uh, and um, concern that the, the church is having now and that we want to uh, take a part in being um, uh, uh, supportive and, and loving in. Um, our our uh, Loma coffee shop, as, as you all know, um, after its uh, closing due to the uh, COVID-19 uh, scenario, uh, we had some former employees that um, have been having a hard time um, uh, navigating or even uh, receiving uh, unemployment and those benefits uh, that workers receive uh, during this time. Um, because they are um, experiencing this hardship, uh, we thought it, that it, we thought it would be um, loving if we as a church uh, would decide to uh, share benevolence uh, with those uh, workers who are uh, those former workers who are, are now having those hardships and not able to receive those benefits as of yet. Um, so we have, uh, uh, we'll be setting up uh, and on our online giving, on our online giving, there will be now a, uh, a, a slot that could be um, selected for Benevolence Loma. Benevolence Loma. So if you feel so led um, to be a part of, of our support to that community uh, who um, comprise you know, our, our neighbors, um, you'll be able to uh, reach that um, online portal and, and give through that uh, measure. So I wanted to share that with uh, the church. Um, we, we are going this week back into the book of Ruth, and we, we were uh, there, and we had gotten up to the third chapter, and we uh, paused for a little bit during uh, the resurrection uh, time, but it's always resurrection time in the church. Uh, we know that, amen. But uh, we're going to uh, venture back into Ruth, and we're going to pick up uh, where we left off. Uh, we've been journeying, for those that haven't been with us, uh, we've been following uh, this woman, Ruth, uh, who uh, left her homeland in, in Moab and has uh, gone with her mother-in-law uh, uh, back to their homeland, back to her homeland of Bethlehem. Uh, both of them now widows 
and we've been watching their uh, journey and, and, and how God has begun uh, blessing them um, through the hand of a man named Boaz. Um, we'll, we'll pick up uh, from where uh, uh, Ruth and Boaz have been um, uh, interacting and uh, let's, let's read a little bit um, in chapter 3, in Ruth chapter 3. Ruth chapter 3, uh, verse 14. Ruth chapter 3, verse 14. It says, So she lay at his feet until the morning, but arose before one could recognize another. And he said, Let it not be known that the woman came to the threshing floor. And he said, Bring the garment you are wearing, hold it out, so she held it, and he measured out six measures of barley and put it on her. Then she went into the city. And when she came to her, her mother-in-law, she said, How did it fare, my daughter? Then she told her all that the man had done for her, saying, These six measures of barley he gave to me, for he said to me, You must not go back empty-handed to your mother-in-law. She replied, Wait, my daughter until you learn how the matter turns out. For the man will not rest, but will settle the matter today. Will settle the matter today. Um, that is, a, that is the, uh, the prelude to where we're going to be today uh, in the scripture. But I wanted to share that to bring us up to speed. Uh, we've known that, uh, uh, been told through this scripture that Boaz is a worthy man and Ruth is a worthy woman, um, but uh, what God is going to do in their lives is yet to be seen uh, uh, until we proceed in the scripture. Right now, um, we'll have someone from our worship team lead us in worship uh, toward uh, the idea of one that's even more worthy, worthy of our, our devotion, worthy of our surrendering our lives to uh, to Jesus Christ, the worthy one. So we'll be led in, in worship uh, now. Uh, let's sing along in our hearts or, or out loud. Let's sing along out loud in our homes. Thank God.
God for uh, musical worship and thank God for our worship team taking time out in their homes and uh, just sharing uh, music with us that brings us into the uh, presence of the Lord. Uh, we are going to uh, pick up our reading now in the book of Ruth, in the fourth chapter, beginning at the first verse. Ruth chapter four, beginning at the first verse. It says, Now Boaz had gone up to the gate and sat down there. And behold, the Redeemer of whom Boaz had spoken came by. So Boaz said, Turn aside, friend, sit down here. And he turned aside and sat down. And he took ten men of the elders of the city and said, Sit down here. So they sat down. Then he said to the Redeemer, uh, Naomi, who has come back from the country of Moab, is selling the parcel of land that belonged to our relative Elimelech. So I thought I would tell you of it and say, buy it in the presence of those sitting here and in the presence of the elders of my people. If you will redeem it, redeem it. But if you will not tell me that I may know, for there is no one beside you to redeem it, and I come after you. Uh, and he said, I will redeem it. Then Boaz said, the day you buy the field from the hand of Naomi, you also acquire Ruth, the Moabite, the widow of the dead, in order to perpetuate the name of the dead in his inheritance. Then the Redeemer said, I cannot redeem it for myself, lest I impair my own inheritance. Take my right of redemption yourself, for I cannot redeem it. Now, this was the custom in former times in Israel concerning redeeming and exchanging to confirm a transaction. The one drew off his sandal and gave it to the other. And this was the manner of attesting in Israel. So when the Redeemer said to Boaz, buy it for yourself, he drew off his sandal. Then Boaz said to the elders and all the people, you are witnesses this day that I have bought from the hand of Naomi all that belonged to Elimelech and all that belonged to Chilion and Malon, her sons, also Ruth the Moabite, the widow of Malon. I have bought uh, to be my wife to perpetuate the name of the dead in his inheritance, that the name of the dead may not be cut off from among his brothers and from the gate of his native place. You are witnesses this day. Then all the people who were at the gate and the elders said, we are witnesses. May the Lord make the woman who is coming into your house like Rachel and Leah, uh, who together built up the house of Israel. May you act worthily in Ephrathah and be renowned in Bethlehem. And may your house be like the house of Perez, whom Tamar bore to Judah, because the offspring of because of the offspring that the Lord will give you by this young woman. Because of the offspring the Lord will give you by this young woman. Let's pray. Father, uh, we thank you for your word. Uh, this time, Lord, let your grace be upon your word. Um, pray for anointing to preach. Pray uh, for anointing to receive your word. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Because, Lord, you're my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. The, <clears throat> the, act, the act of redeeming can be defined as gaining, regaining, or setting something or someone free by paying a price. Gaining, regaining, or setting something or someone free by paying a price. Uh, the one who was willing to pay the price to gain back what was lost is called a redeemer. A redeemer, and the message today is titled, The Redeemer Takes Action. The Redeemer Takes Action. Now, the, the last time uh, we were together we, uh, 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 in, in the book of Ruth, we saw Ruth, she was there lying at the feet of Boaz after proposing and positioning herself for marriage at the threshing floor. 
Boaz made a promise before God to take Ruth as his wife if another relative with the right to marry her refused to. She stayed safely at his feet throughout the night and then went home to her mother-in-law, Naomi, with a gift of grain and the promising words of Boaz in the morning. Uh, Naomi was sure that her plan to find Ruth a husband had worked and assured Ruth that she needed to do nothing else but wait for the Redeemer to act. Wait for the Redeemer to act. Um, consider a Redeemer is not simply known by his title, but by the acts of redemption. A Redeemer is not simply known by a title, but by their acts of redemption. Uh, redemption shows up in the text in three different ways. Um, uh, redemption is proposed in verses one through four. Uh, redemption is refused in verses five through eight. And then redemption is confirmed in verses nine through 12. And, and the scripture says, now Boaz had gone up to the gate and sat down there. And behold, the redeemer of whom Boaz had spoken came by. So Boaz said, turn aside, friend, sit down here. And he turned aside and sat down. And he took 10 men of the elders of the city and said, sit down here. So they sat down. After, after Boaz uh, made his promise to Ruth the night before, we see him here up. And, and positioning himself to carry out his vow uh, that, he, that he made. He was going to clear up whether he could redeem Ruth or whether it would be a closer relative to the family that had to do the redeeming. Uh, the gate where Boaz sets himself up, was it was more than just a, a doorway into the city. Uh, the gates of the city in this time were large openings uh, built in the walls that surrounded the city, that they, they had pathways uh, to walk through and uh, small compartments inside with benches where people could sit and meet. Uh, the gates, they, they were the gathering places for the elders and the important people of the city. The gate may have been uh, used something like our own uh, city hall or town hall or, or, or the courthouse is used today. Um, important business took place at the gate. Uh, the, the word uh, uh, that comes up, behold, we never run over that word. Behold tells us to pay attention to what's happening. It says, behold, the man who Boaz was looking for, he just happens to come by. Uh, we see uh, God's hand moving that uh, what Boaz is looking for just happens to come his way. Um, the relative that was closer to Naomi's late husband, Elimelech, than he was, the one that stood in line to redeem or, or even marry Ruth. He shows up at the gate. Um, it, it's, it's worth noting, though, that this other relative's name is never mentioned. Uh, for now, we'll just call him, uh, let's call him Mr. He, he seems like a Mr. to me. Let's call him Mr. <laughs> Uh, uh, Boaz uh, gets to business right away, asking Mr. to have a seat and, and then organizing a group of elders and witnesses to sit with them so there could be a record of the arrangement they come to and the agreement that, uh, 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 that Boaz is about to propose. Uh, there, there seems to be a, a method to how Boaz uh, moves forward, laying out this opportunity for redemption uh, to uh, 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 the mister. <laughs> um, first, Boaz only presents the potential redeemer with the opportunity to buy the land that Ruth's mother-in-law, Naomi, is unable to maintain and has to sell off. So he mentions the land first. Um, and, and, and because she had to sell off, um, in, in Israel, it, it's recognized that the land belongs to the Lord. And before they ever entered into the promised land, he had determined that no family would permanently lose what he had allotted to them because of poverty or death. Um, 
He created the role of a kinsman redeemer. The Lord did that. That's described in Leviticus 25. The redeemer is a close relative who has the right and responsibility of buying back the property or even any family member sold away because of poverty, giving each family the chance to maintain their portion in the future blessings of Israel in the land. Um, well, here, uh, Mr. jumps at the opportunity and is ready to sign on the dotted line to make the purchase. Uh, he was probably thinking he'll gain more from redeeming the land than he'll lose. So he, 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 he accepts the proposal until he hears the full cost. The full cost. Says, then Boaz said, the day you buy the field from the hand of Naomi, you also acquire Ruth, the Moabite, the widow of the dead, in order to perpetuate the name of the dead in his inheritance. Then the Redeemer said, I, I, I cannot redeem it for myself, lest I impair my own inheritance. Take my right of redemption yourself, for I cannot redeem it. Now, this was the custom in former times in Israel concerning redeeming and exchanging to confirm a transaction. Uh, the one drew off his sandal and gave it to the other. And this was the manner of attesting in Israel. So when the Redeemer said to Boaz, buy it for yourself, he drew off his sandal. Uh, 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 at first, it sounds like it, it might be over for Ruth and Boaz, people uh, that if you've been reading along, you've been cheering inside your heart for Ruth and Boaz. Uh, um, it sounds like it might be over until Mr. hears about the fine print and the offer that Boaz makes to him. After the quick response to the proposed redemption, Boaz shares what comes along with taking responsibility for buying the land. It includes marrying Ruth, uh, who was a foreigner, uh, to some, and, and then giving up the land to her child when he becomes of age. Now, the, the, the background for that, uh, the second part of the redemption that Boaz shares, that's found in Deuteronomy 25, and we mentioned it uh, before. It describes the leveret marriage uh, that calls for a brother to marry his brother's widow if he dies childless. And now, uh, strange to our ears, but the purpose was to produce an heir to carry on the deceased brother's name and maintain his land inheritance. Now, a redeemer could take on this role as a part of protecting the legacy of a particular household or, or clan. Um, but no sooner than, than uh, he, he hears the part about Ruth and marrying her, Mr. hits the brakes on, on his, his deal. He says, I can't do it. I can't do it. And he realizes that he may have to give up more than he thought to be a redeemer. Uh, Naomi was an old woman who wouldn't be much trouble, but marrying Ruth with the possibility of having a child who wouldn't contribute to his own property and legacy, but could likely take from it, was, it was too much for Mr. He says, I'm out. If you ever watch Shark Tank, <laughs> he says, I'm out. Uh, he, 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 he backs out. And, and now remember this, this process, it, it's not, it was never meant or designed to be about what the Redeemer could get out of it, but how they could help the one that's being redeemed. Um, we have to be mindful of anyone uh, offering help with their own benefits or, or agenda in mind. Uh, he just holds up his hands and says, Boaz, you can have it. You can have it. Um, and, and so by the time that, that this was written, the, the first readers, uh, uh, they wouldn't have been familiar with this, this process. People no longer sealed their deals uh, the same way. So the writer has to explain how this thing was going to be settled with a sandal. I'm, I'm not sure if anybody remembers this, and this, this is how things change. I, I just read about it somewhere. I'm not old enough to remember. But there used to be a time when business deals or agreements were closed with a gentleman's handshake. The whole, the whole system 
of the gentleman's handshake. It depended on the trustworthiness of both parties to keep their word. It's, it's at a time when their word was their bond and it meant something. Uh, um, a derivative of that, there was also a handshake. It wasn't te technically a gentleman's hand. It was a, it was a spit shake. Uh, that was for the, for the, for the laborers and the workers and, and sometimes the little kids would imitate it, but, but we won't get into that. I, I see you don't like that, the spit shake. But, but today the, the handshake deal it, it is nothing more than a code for a verbal agreement until actual paperwork can be signed. Um, it doesn't mean much. Um, uh, there, there's going to be people uh, years from now who, who look back and say, oh, people used to do this. And that's what's happening here. Back in this day, removing and offering uh, uh, the sandals sealed the deal. And, and it likely had a symbolic meaning of one person giving up and another person gaining the right to walk the land uh, uh, with the sandal. If Mr. had been a, an actual brother-in-law, watch this, uh, refusing his obligation to the widow, uh, it could have, it, the, the widow could have actually taken the sandal and then spit in his face. I'm not making this up. This is in Deuteronomy 25. When you read it, you'll see it. I'm not making it up. Uh, uh, that was a part of, uh, uh, of the law. It was written. Um, but since, since he wasn't uh, an actual uh, uh, brother-in-law and, and, and he refused, um, Boaz is there. Boaz takes on and confirms the redemption. He steps in. Then Boaz said to the elders and all the people, they're sitting there at the gate, you are witnesses this day that I have bought from the hand of Naomi all that belongs to Elimelech and all that belong to Chilion and Malon. Uh, those are Naomi's sons who died. Um, also Ruth the Moabite, the widow of Malon. Uh, I have bought to be my wife to perpetuate the name of the dead in his inheritance that the name of the dead may not be cut off from among his brothers and from the gate of his native place. You are witnesses this day. Then all the people who were at the gate and the elders said, we are witnesses. May the Lord make the woman who is coming into your house like Rachel and Leah, who together built up the house of Israel. Uh, may you act worthily in Ephrathah and be renowned in Bethlehem. And may your house be like the house of Perez, who Tamar bore to Judah because of the offspring that the Lord will give you by this young woman. When the other relative, Mr. Refuses, Boaz immediately steps up to the plate. He calls all the elders and people there to act as witnesses. They would be uh, like his notary public, uh, um, documenting on that day that he took over the deed to the land of, of Naomi and the responsibility of having Ruth for a wife. He, he willingly took on the cost of the land and would willingly turn it back over to their future child as a part of her late husband's inheritance. I mean, it sounds uh, tremendous uh, what he was willing to do. Um, therefore, uh, the, the privilege of marrying Ruth and uh, uh, becoming a redeemer for Naomi. It, it, was, a, it was a bold and costly move. Uh, everyone wasn't built for that, that type of thing, but Boaz is what the redeemer should be. Uh, uh, not only was he, was he worthy, he was willing. Uh, does, does Boaz, uh, does he remind you of anyone? Um, Boaz, uh, there all the people and the elders agreed to be witnesses and show their approval with a powerful blessing uh, spoken there over Boaz. By, by mentioning uh, Rachel and Leah in this blessing that they gave, uh, who, along with their um, surrogates, were the mothers of the 12 tribes of Israel. The people not only count Ruth the Moabitess uh, as, a, 
as a part of them, but ask God to build something great through her offspring. Um, Ruth has been completely included. The, the blessing the people speak over Boaz and his future family, um, uh, the blessing is important not only to show the people's approval, though, but it also sets the stage and serves as a bridge for things to come. The tribe of Judah being mentioned would remind people of Jacob's blessing over Judah, his son, in Genesis chapter 49. Uh, that, that sets the expectation uh, for a ruler to come out of the people of Judah through the line of his son, Perez, who was Boaz's ancestor. The people go on mentioning um, Boaz's name being great in Bethlehem, in Ephrata, in their blessing. It also sets the stage for the greater future hope that the Messiah, the Christ, would be born there in Bethlehem, in Ephrata, which would be prophesied by Micah in, in uh, chapter 5, verse 2, you'll find it. And, and then confirmed in the, in, in the book of Matthew, chapter 2, you'll find it when Jesus was born in a manger <clears throat> in Bethlehem. If, if, if you've been tracking in this book for any time now, you, you may have started to recognize that the blessings that are spoken, um, they, they, they have a way of coming to pass in the people's lives. Um, the blessings that uh, Naomi has spoken uh, over Ruth is coming to pass in her life. The blessing that Boaz spoke over Ruth was coming to pass. The blessing that Naomi spoke over Boaz uh, is coming to pass. Um, but uh, we'll take a look into how they how, how it all uh, comes together uh, next week. We'll look a little deeper next week at how it all comes together. Just consider a couple points before we go. Consider a couple points. Here we have uh, negotiations taking place on behalf of both Naomi and Ruth. The things being worked through and worked out for their benefit are happening without their knowledge, input, or effort. Uh, classic patriarchal society. Um, but before we can uh, 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 criticize it fully, although most people today would oppose not being present to take part in decisions about their lives, this thing was a part of Naomi's plan. Uh, and I think it gives a spiritual picture. It's a part of Naomi's plan. She had told Ruth to just wait after making her request for marriage and care from Boaz and back in chapter 3 and verse 18. Uh, she told her, just wait. She was trusting in Boaz's character to do the right thing, to settle the matter, that he would take care of it and that Ruth needed to do no more. Consider the things that the Lord has, has worked out and continues to work out on your behalf without your input or energy. Could he be doing a thing right now that will be for your good and for his glory? Could we benefit at times like Ruth from making our petition to the Lord, trusting his character, and just waiting to see how he responds to consider. The last point is that we see how, uh, how Boaz was much more committed than Mr. as a redeemer. But consider now how Boaz resembles Jesus as a redeemer. Acting out of the, uh, the heart of God's law, he stepped in as a near relative uh, when there was a relative even closer to, than him. He, he willingly uh, and, and publicly paid the cost to redeem this part of his family whose lives and future participation in God's blessings were being threatened because of death and poverty. Now consider Jesus. The Bible recognizes Jesus as our Redeemer through his powerful act 
of redemption on our behalf. You, 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 you see uh, 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 the, 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 uh, it being pointed to in Ephesians chapter 1, uh, one uh, uh, and then 1 Peter chapter 1 and Titus chapter 2 and Hebrews chapter 9 verse 15 and, and, and many other verses. These verses will be in the notes under the video. Um, but, but, but as a redeemer, he comes near to us as a relative by taking on human flesh. Consider Jesus. Um, since our, our redemption wasn't about buying back lost or sold land, but instead our souls, our very souls uh, needed redemption from the bondage of sin. No amount of cash would get us free. The required price of sin is death. Unlike Boaz, though, Jesus was the only one capable of paying that price on our behalf. Uh, so Jesus took action on our behalf. He willingly accepted his role as redeemer. He considered us worth the cost of letting go of uh, his rights, and his, his heavenly status, and even his life here on earth just to redeem us. The Bible says that he humbled himself to the point of death, and that death even on a cross. And, and because he, he not only died, but he rose from the dead on the third day, his redemption, his, his payment, his ransom is still available for us today. It's still available for those uh, today who would want to be set free from sin and, and who are willing to come to him. He's still offering it. So uh, we thank God uh, for the availability of our Redeemer. We thank God for the act of redemption that Jesus carried out and this picture that we have here in the book of Ruth of redemption in action. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for uh, your word. We thank you, God, for this time, this contemplation of what uh, redemption means and what it means to have a great redeemer. Uh, Lord, uh, help us to, uh, uh, to, to take uh, ownership of this for our own lives and uh, to share it with others, Lord, who may be in need of, of the redemption that Christ offer, offers, Lord. Um, we thank you, uh, we praise you, and we glorify you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.